Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Theta, this is Lessons, and we are here with episode 28 of SDF Macross. But before that, I will go over the board and see what's changed. Or what I may have mistaken, or, <laughs> you know, missed. Of course I put Midmay's parents down as dead. Midmay yeah. suspected they were dead verbally, so I'm just going to assume that they weren't mysteriously in a bunker for no good reason. Uh, who else? Uh, Golg here, obviously dead. Um, Admiral Hayase, also obviously dead. Pretty much. Confirm on screen, yeah. Well, I don't know. Not confirmed. There's no body. They didn't, you know, they didn't do the one thing that I expected them to do, which is go look. I think when the fireball sweeps you entire body off screen, I, uh, I think that maybe... Did not. You know, did not. not. She was talking to him on a camera, and all we know is that there was an explosion and the camera went off. We don't know what happened to him. Obviously, you do. I'm arguing with somebody who's seen the show, but I'm just saying that if you were writing this, you have all the opportunity to have him come back. Because you know he already survived like the initial bombardment of the planet. No other comments, though? No, basically. I mean, I think he's pretty much dead. Well, no, I mean, not specifically about him. I mean, the board total. You haven't said a uh, thing. No, it, no, sorry about that. It's just I was looking over. I think everybody who should be dead is dead. And everybody who's not supposed to be dead is still very much alive. Uh, let me see. Uh, is anybody? Parent, Cyril, Bodoza, the spies are alive. Yeah. And connected them to the thing, but I didn't know exactly who was with who, so... Yeah, I think you got it right. All right, well, that's the board. I have some thoughts, but why don't you go over uh, the recap before we do anything else? Ah, last episode was episode 27, Love Flows By, which was a game changer, or at least it should be. Um, St. Julie, Bodolzer, and the main Trinitary fleet go up on Earth and destroy it. They just bombard the Earth and turn it into a wasteland. Everybody who wasn't on the Macross or wasn't part of the Centrality fleet is pretty much dead. And now, well, we're going to see what happens. Oh, and there was a strong suggestion that Hikaru broke, broke up with, or actually was never really in a relationship with Minmei, although they finally do get to, ki to kiss. And he manages to go and rescue um, Misa from the remains of the of the Grand Cannon, which, by the way, managed to destroy a lot of ships. But even when you're facing four million ships, it would never have been enough. So, yeah, I mean, it was a great episode for me, well, especially yeah. compared compared to what's well. I don't want to spoil, but this next episode is not one of my favorites. I mean, to be fair, though, I have liked episodes that you did not, so you saying that the next episode's bad doesn't doesn't mean anything until we get there, at the very least. Um, but yeah, like I said, I had some uh, comments about last episode. Or not to, not like a whole Theta's Thoughts thing, I just wrote down things I appreciated from last episode. Uh, they loaded up the nukes, or reactionary weaponry, for the final fight with the Centrati forces. They didn't have to say it, but they did, to indicate how far this final fight would go. Uh, the Grand Cannon crew, despite having planned to fire their super weapon, uh, and then demand a negotiation, saw what was coming, and tried to negotiate first, before firing. I like that uh, the scale of the situation above them forced them to try and be reasonable first. Uh, I mean, on that point, I think the 
And this is something that uh, we were talking about earlier, how it seemed that everybody was being irrational, right? And looking back, I think, and I try to, to defend that, but of course we didn't have this context to say it, so you know, there's always a missing piece here, is that what the Earth government did, the UN government did, while I think in some cases was dumb, from their point of view, based on the information that they had, right, uh, seemed to be the wisest course, right? In other words, okay, so the ship disappeared. We don't know how it disappeared. We don't know where it went. If we tell people that our biggest defense against the aliens just disappeared because the aliens just took it, then that means that we're defenseless, right? So admitting that would have been a bit of a problem. So, oh, no, the anti, you know, UN force, they attacked the island, so... You know, that's that's a that's a known threat, right? It's better to go to something on threat than a... Yes, we know aliens exist, but we don't want to talk about the power of the aliens, right? Also, they didn't know, right? Sure, they saw a couple of hundred ships, maybe a thousand ships, but like, eh, we have this big gun, so maybe we can do this, right? We can we can pull it up. But the moment the four million ships showed up, it was like, yeah, okay, this is a reality we can ignore, right? We At the very least, we're going to have to try to talk to them. But by that time, it was too late. Oh, I think my, literally, my next thing leans into your, well, your, sorry, my brain ain't coming up with the words, leans into your sentiment towards the uh, the UN. I'm pretty sure I indicated that I thought the UN High Command was either stupid or evil for their designs on the Macross and the whole Grand Cannon plan, but you know what? Fuck it. Good on them. Having watched the entire Earth get nuked four million times over, I'd basically cheer on anyone able to fire one back. We saw the entire surface of the world get flattened, and this was the Earth's final crack back. Independent of what's going on in orbit with the Macross and Allied Centrati, those elements are just the future for whoever's left. The Grand Cannon is the response for everyone that's died. Pretty much. I make fun of it a lot in the watch through so far, but the Shao Pei Long theme is probably my favorite of all the Min Mei songs. I mean, it's a welcome break from, you know, whoosh, whoosh, you know. <laughs> you know well, it's got, a, it's got its own, I don't know, there's there's elements of Shao Pei Long that I don't like, which is the like, back half, but the initial opening theme to Shao Pei Long, I can't say it off the top of my head right now, I'm... <laughs> Uh, but when I was listening to it and I'm watching the episode again, I'm like, you know, it's actually a pretty good, pretty good theme. And like most good themes, you don't remember the parts of it that you didn't like. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I wish Roy had made it as far as episode 27. I feel like if he had survived this uh, far, he would have died this episode doing something badass to sacrifice himself for the cause. Some real Independence Day level shit. Yeah. I mean, I can see that happening, but at the same time, I think, well, I, the reason, no, I don't think, the reason why Roy got, Roy got removed earlier was to make room for Hikaru, right? Like, okay, the, the, he's a teacher, he's a mentor, he's a senpai, we have to get rid of him in order for the hero to, to bloom, which was a, well, still very much a, right? Does it really work? Eh, I don't think so. I mean, we saw Macro Zero. Where, you know, you had two characters, and Roy certainly was, again, the older, more than both of them had, you know, storylines. So, you know, they were following an old, older playbook. Does it work? I'll leave that out to the audience. Uh, I didn't write this one down, but I was thinking about it just a little bit earlier this morning. Um, I think my favorite uh, shot of last episode was uh, Min May singing and dancing to the backdrop of the, the laser light show that's going on behind her. It's like the, I don't know, 10 second uh, segment where it literally focuses on her. I think I used it literally for the uh, the thumbnail where she like whips her hair back, she's holding the microphone, and you know, the lights are flashing all around her. Only specifically, beca not because it's like a, a great idol scene, but I think it has the connotations of... Uh, 
there are better examples of this in media, and I just can't think of any right now. Um, did you saw Avatar, right? Yeah. You know the scene in the final battle where I think it's it's probably Jake who's laying on the ground, and you see this uh, burning horse running through the forest. It's that Minmay is the burning horse in this scene. The the eye catching symbol of what's going wrong right now. Oh, well, right, I suppose. Well, no. Depending on what. No, nothing is going right. She's literally singing as the world burns. It's yeah, but also she is the voice of hope that they there's still a victory to be had even in this horrific scenario, right? That the side that is fighting against Spadosa can win, and it's their main weapon as well, right? Which is that oh hey look, there's a reason to fight for and to live. Well, I'm I'm sure there's but... like some literary uh, literary expert out there that's saying I'm getting my metaphors mixed up. Like uh, Misa calling for help on a destroyed Earth where she's the only survivor is probably a better example of that metaphor. But for me, it's the it's the light show and the in the the sound that draws your attention to it in this horrible scenario, much the same way as these these symbols of like the four horsemen of the apocalypse do in any other. And then the other media example of this very same thing. But that's all my thoughts. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I love that episode. It kind of clinches a lot, almost everything that comes to this point. And I wish, to be perfectly honest, that maybe we had maybe one or two episodes. In fact, I will say this. When we get to, if we actually get, get to f watch, uh, you know, Flashback 2012, I wish that literally there was this episode and then Flashback 2012. And we'll see in the upcoming episode, starting with this one, why that is. But yeah, that would have been a perfect ending. And it kind of also reminds me that, you know, they were, they were trying to do, and, and you know, anime does a lot of long form because most, a lot of it is, is manga based. So they add tissues of manga. So whatever the mangaka is uh, doing the long form storytelling, they kind of try to emulate it in the anime, right? But this is a anime that doesn't have, you know, uh, a manga behind it. And it's an anime that grew out of giant robot, you know, episodic, you know, monster of the week situations. So this is supposed to be real robot, which the you know, distinction is, it's there. I put it that way. Um, and so you can tell that they were, you know, they were trying to do long form storytelling, but they were still going episode by episode. Like, well, I guess we got to come up with the next episode with something, but we got to, we have this ongoing storyline going on about, you know, the Centrati and the humans and the Macross. And this, you know, for, I do actually still love um, SEF Macross, but for all that it is, you can really tell that they were winging it <laughs> along the way. Uh, it's like, well, you know, we need a big change. We need, you know, we, we have the storyline. We got to go for it. And then in the remaining episodes, which we have, let me look at the episode guide. Well, I mean, there's 36 uh, total. So what, nine? Yeah. Yeah. 28 to 36. So actually eight episodes left. Well, I mean, I don't think uh, you count this one because we haven't watched it yet. Yeah. For us, it will be eight. For the audience, it will be nine. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's what's happening. So, I mean, it's we'll funny see. you mentioned the whole uh, monster of the week thing because I just watched Get a uh, two episodes of Get a Robo the other day, which is what seventy mm -hmm. four, so same yeah. year. Yeah, uh, and no, then seventy. No, this is nineteen eighty three. Oh, right, right. It will, be, it will be closer to Gundam. Yeah, I don't know why I jumped that way. Um, because I know because I was about to say I was also about to compare that to uh, Voltaise Five. Which comes out uh, what three years after Get a Robo mm -hmm. originally comes out, and that's mm -hmm. the one Atomino works on before Gundam. So Gundam seventy nine. Obviously, I don't know why I said this was same year. That would be insane. Get a Robo and this competing with one another. Um, but yeah, no. Actually, thinking about it, uh, this has basically the same story as uh, Voltaise Five. If you think about it. 
Have you ever seen Evil Taste Five or heard about it or anything? No, no, I heard about it, yeah, but no. Yeah, it's part of the Super Robot Romance trilogy of unrelated anime, which is kind of weird when you think about it. SDF also has its own trilogy of unrelated <laughs> stories, but um, but yeah, no, uh, Evil Taste Five, huge in the Philippines, by the way, um is literally an alien invasion force, arrives, destroys the entire Earth uh, defenses, and it's a single giant robot that's holding them off. Uh, ironically, the, the bad guy looks like the very first tiefling that I've ever seen animated. Mm -hmm. Also, get a robot actually was part of Monlacher strength because it was on the Massinger Z family, supposed to be the last of those. But Gona guy has made it a rule that probably won't survive his passing, probably. Uh, <laughs> that uh, get a robot and, ma and none of the messengers should be in the same video game or in the same manga or in the same anime because he doesn't want to fight where people are saying which one is strong. But then again, he has all the other messengers, and the other newer messengers are clearly stronger and more powerful than the original messenger. So there's that. Well, see, I was watching it with Raph, and Raph was constantly bringing up Messenger, and I've never seen those. All yeah. my only way in on that whole thing was the fact that Gona guy is the first time I ever heard his name. Mm -hmm. Um, was the guy who made it, and obviously my poll was, well, they should have been called Go Getters then. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the first two episodes, they don't even explain what Getter radiation is or anything. That was my. No. That was my negative. I did play the Go, because uh, it's called UFO, uh, what's it? UFO Grandizer. Uh, Defend, UFO Defender Grandizer, I think that's the full name. And there is a video game version of that, where you kind of play like, sort of like uh, the first episodes, right? The, the backdrop of the character. It's a short game. It has a DLC, but, you know, it's fun for a little while because it's a, you know, giant robot beating him up, right? But, you know. Yep. Very arcadey, but yeah. Well, unless you have any uh, further thoughts, I feel like we're getting off tangent here. So. Yeah. So. I feel like we should go ahead and get into it. Uh, but Let's before we uh, get started, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, Uncensored, uh, Unfiltered, and Uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. It's all to support the channel, just a little bit extra. You know, you figure at least after episode 27, they could have changed the opening. Yeah. I I, I do agree in that one, yeah. Shift a little bit of the... Uh, I don't know. They are repeating a lot of shots already. I don't know if there was any money in the budget to shift. Even I'm though I feel know. like we're about to get into a uh, a recap episode. Uh, and also the whole mood of the show changes after, you know, last episode. So well, no shit. This, the intro so it's like, oh, hey, we can still defend the planet. We can do all this. And then it's like, well, we tried. And that's all that can be said about it. <laughs> we tried. Well, I just noticed that there was a shot there in the opening that I didn't notice before where his helmet's upside down or changed. There's a there's a scene very right in the beginning. We're gonna watch three episodes back to back, so I'm saying this now, so you might be able to spot it or tell me if I'm just wrong. Hikaru mm -hmm. uh, is in the cockpit. He's got the helmet up, but he's wearing like a blue mask over his face. It's that, or the helmet's not up here where it's supposed to be, and it's just down here. I think it's down here. That's what it is. Well, we'll watch it again. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So. Well, we had no choice. They put it in every episode. Look upon my works, ye mighty. Now they went with the desert apocalypse as opposed to the, uh, you know, nuclear winter kind of thing. Now, I'm sorry, I was making a stupid joke and I missed it how many years? Two years. Okay. 
そしてゼントラーディ軍の少数の人々だけであった。Again, with you know, the tires squeak when he has like robotic legs. Another Midorita Nature is healing. Unfortunately, biodiversity is fucked. Oh, Roy, back in his circus days? Yep. That's a Haru. There's a Haru in that wreckage. Why did he also walk? Why did he pluck a flower? It's literally one of the last flowers left, and you killed it. I think it's what he's discovered that they're coming back. Right, right, right. But I just mean there's so few left. The act of plucking a flower is the act of killing it. Yeah, and also the Earth based Valkyries got like nothing done. They all got killed like in the first blast. むださ調べたってこの辺りには生存者は一人もいないんだからな大体こんなパトロールを毎日やってること自体無駄なんだよ親くな親くな全トラ人たちの中に町で暴れ回っている奴らがいる以上しょうがないさ任務と思って諦
This doesn't this... matter to me, because she's still going to think about what's-his-name all the time, too, I'm sure. Our name guy is not coming to me all of a sudden. Or is your problem that they've housewifed her? With, like, even an uh, uh, apron as well? Not... Just, just wait. I think they're going to mention it. She dropped the keys there. I mean, it's been two years. Yeah, they're not living together. They're not a that's couple. That's funny. I appreciate that. that. That's good. Yeah, so, I mean, this is just a... Um... Fra, this is a Fra Amaro relationship. Then, yes. I mean, she is his her superior. She goes to his place to clean it up for him. Yeah. I mean, that's to me, that's just all kinds of wrong. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the show. I mean, come on, they're not in a relationship. If I were him, I would be telling her, why are you coming over to my place to clean this up? Well, you're saying they're not and in a relationship, I... and you're literally talking over the, you've got yourself another woman. No, I wish I did. I mean, it's literally implying that this is what they want to happen. Like I said, it's not the most egregious thing they've done to a woman in this show. <laughs> what they did yeah, to Milo but... was a crime. Yep, yeah, let's keep on. Uh... I mean, it's spreading the seed. Uh... Let's make sure the rockets are pointed right air at the ground. Two years, she hasn't come up with any new songs. から街へ巡業して回ってるって聞いたけど元気かなフランテシティの皆さんありがとうありがとうフランテこの近くだ皆さん街が非一日と復興しているのも全て皆さんの努力によるものです人民名はそんな皆さんを励ますために来ました did Kaifun take over the radio stations? No. Apparently, he says his name. Well, I just didn't recognize his voice. I didn't know it was literally Kaifun himself. I guess our songwriter must have died in the attack. I mean, it took her like one year to come up with like a whole repertoire of songs. Two years later, it's still all she's got. なんだ。なんだじゃありませんよ。今まで何してらしたんです。ずっとコールしてたんですよ。なんかあったのか。いや、大丈夫。バルキリーを離れるのならちゃんと無線機ぐらい持ってってください。妻、それより聞いて驚
Like, they're not terraforming. There's got to be some expert out there on the... I keep... My brain keeps going to the word economy, and it's not economy. <laughs> the environment. There's got to be some environmental expert oh. out there that when you're so... There's no plants left on the planet, right? The air has got to be getting thin. There's got to be nothing left. I mean, we're already concerned about the environmental changes from just cutting down the rainforest. And now there's no plant life on the surface of the earth. See, I mean, she's like, oh, no, we should have a family, a baby, and all that. And he's like, yeah, I don't know, I'm still hung up on me, me. But thank you for cleaning my place, you know, for free. I mean, to be fair, it's not like a change of pace for her. This is exactly what she did with Kaifu. I mean, seriously? She should be having the, um... Nickelback effect right now. Yeah. Where they play only your songs constantly and people just get sick of you. ふざけ上がって。お酒の飲みすぎよ。見てみろ。あれだけ人が集まっていながらたったこれだけだぞ。ビギ星をもらって何が悪い。他の人たちだって生きることだけで精一杯なのよ。これだけでも感謝しなくちゃ。感謝生活物資を送ってくださっている軍に感謝しろっていうのか。もうシャンリーズウォーズキャラクターのショー。で
or in battle pods get that much bigger? I think they were always big. Oh. Well, I mean, that one stepped on a building. Its foot was bigger than the building. Whereas before, their scale was the foot was the size of a car. So they got like 10 times bigger. I think that was the size of the car was at regular Centrati. No, no. Uh, we did the comparison before for the battle pod things. Back when they attacked from across city in like episode two or three. Oh, that yeah, but the stepping on the car was a was a Centrati. That got out of the battle pod. No, I'm talking. Well, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a battle pod because it had the weird three pronged foot thing. あれ、休みなのに呼び出されたの?質問に答えて。ちょっと人に会いに行ってたんだ。まさか武器を持ち出すまでエスカレートすると思ってもみなかった。誰に会いに行ったか想像がつくわ。え?とにかく急いで。任
good emotional understanding. ヒュウシティタコトは現実になってしまったようだな。これで済めばいいんですが。来てもらったのは今後のことだ。と言われますと、この先同じような暴動が起きる可能性はある。だとしたら、今のうちにパトロール隊に所属しているゼントラージンを
I just, uh, I just found the whole thing creepy. I don't know. All sides. I, I think it's fine. It's fine. They have like some sort of weird relationship still that's carried on for two years. But also, I think obviously ways, she's it... trying to push. She's trying to push to make him understand. I think it's one of those. She wants him to confess something to her, and he doesn't have any emotional understanding of the situation as per the entire show so far. Yeah. So that's just what it is. I mean, ultimately, it's a will they, won't they keep going, keeps going. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to keep this going, even though, you know, the end of the last episode, clearly they were together, right? They, they really were. So like, I don't think they were together at the end of the last episode. I think it was a, a should have been moment, but they didn't, like, seal the deal. Like, they were just like, you saved me. And it was like, this, this should roll into a romance moment. Like, kiss at the setting sun, roll credits, end of season, season series, whatever. But they yeah. didn't. They just looked, hopefully, towards the future. And that was it. We didn't get any yeah. any emotional resonance to any sort of relationship. So, they obviously saw that there was still a wide open gap there for anything to happen. And now they're playing Kaifun off as a bigger asshole than he was before, opening Which the door hard, for yeah. Min Mei again. But I don't yeah. think that's actually happening. I think I'm reading her thing as I miss Hikaru as I miss my friend. Because she's obviously wandering the wasteland. In some Fallout scenario as a new singer. Not even a new singer, but just as a singer. And she hasn't get to see anybody that she's hung out with for like not the last two years, but all the time before that. And, you know, Kaifun was saying that they were not going to go back to Macro City. Yeah, obviously, because he's going to stick up his ass about the military still. And now he's a drunkard, too. Yeah. Unfortunately, though, still a, apparently a kung fu badass. Look, I can't break a glass bottle with my foot, let alone a I don't know. Concrete wall? Oh, what was left of it? Well, I mean, still. <laughs> I don't know. Can you just walk up to a center block and kick it in half? Uh, never been able to. Yeah, so he's still, even when drunk, a <laughs> kung fu badass. Anyway, I think there's a, there is a lot to unpack from this episode, and a lot of it is... I don't want to use the word problematic. It's not problematic. It is just a problem. I would certainly... I think we have to disagree there, and I would certainly call it problematic. Well, I'm not calling it a problem. I think the elements where you would say are problematic, I would say are indicative of the writing of the show from way before this. I would say the problematic points are set up so long ago as to not be a problem yeah. here anymore. It's just yeah. something, if you've watched this long, you should have gotten used to. I think Mila is the setup for that. The way they fucked up Mila and Genus is just... Yeah. If you didn't stop watching when that happened, then you're just... You're due for what you get. I mean, now they have a baby. Sure, sure. I mean, to be fair, they now did that... give her her own uh, Valkyrie and everything later on. It's just the way that, like, she had no agency in that whatsoever. We need to get them together. Well, I don't know. Have them fight and then get married. I feel like if I woke up at, say, 8 a.m. in the morning, I could have written a better script. I could I'm talk one out. Would. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's it for uh, episode 28 of SDF Macross. Once again, I have been Theta. This is Lessons. We are Stonefaced Reactions, and I will catch you. We will catch you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stonefaced Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?